Episode going. Uh, 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 I'm a zombie. Oh, just like Steve, Evil Dead Two. They're not back in zombies. Theaters. They're not, no, they're not zombies. They're <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> oh, well, actually, um, <laughs> actually. Hi, hello, welcome to Monster Masquerade. I'm Faye, and I'm Mint. We got a very special episode for you today that's only a little intentionally timed because the new Evil Dead (laughs) movie comes out in like two weeks. I'm so excited. Oh, I need to, I'm buying tickets for that tomorrow, so I need to talk to you about that. Okay. Not on here. That You just reminded me. (laughs) (laughs) We can figure that out at a later time. Not now. (laughs) Today, we're going to be talking about Evil Dead 2. Woohoo! Yeah. Yippee! Written and... (laughs) Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> uh, written and directed, of course, by Sam Raimi. Um, there's going to be a little bit of overlap between this one and the very first episode that we did. One, because I was just very excited when we did that one. And so mm-hmm. I kind of like preemptively spoiled some stuff as far as like special effects. That's okay. And also, I just kind of I also confused myself a little bit with the production notes. Oh. Oh, interesting. I think it's cool we're going back to it and we didn't do it in like a hey we're covering the whole franchise in one city <laughs> type things that we tend to do. So No no this is good. I like it. So yeah, Evil Dead 2. We had tried to watch this movie forever ago. <laughs> we did. And got about halfway through and then I think your mom texted us and was like, Are y'all watching for tornadoes? And yeah. we went what yeah we were like no and then i looked at the radar and i was like oh no and then it like flooded near your house like everything was flooded like yeah. impassable so i was like Oop. Uh-huh. so <laughs> we did not watch it and then i moved twice and we finally watched it earlier this week yay <laughs> and it's really good I really like this one i think this is my favorite entry into the evil dead series it's definitely good. There's so much. I have so many notes. I'm so excited to talk What's about it. What's your favorite all of it. part of it? What's your favorite part of Evil Dead 2? Like, what makes it stand out for you? I mean, the thing I love about this one is that it's just so campy. It's so campy. It is so over the top with its like gore. And it's slapstick elements that it has incorporated, which they get, they use a little bit more in the movie after this too. But there is a greater emphasis on like the comedy and also Army of Darkness feels very much like a like an Edgar Wright movie. I don't know if that makes sense, like just as far as the editing and stuff. It does. It's very stylistic. But I get what you're saying. (laughs) (laughs) And so I like this one for like. Being as funny as it is, but still like maintaining that horror element to it. I just think it's very well done. Yeah, I love and, the camp. And I think it says a lot towards like the progress that Sam Raimi had made as a director and as a storyteller, especially when we get into like the behind the scenes stuff. Cause like as we touched on in the first one, like, you know, he, he made that movie when he was like 21, I think we said. Mm hmm. And so he was still kind of an ass and like an edgelord and (laughs) liked tormenting his actors and stuff. And so there's still a little bit of that in this. I'm not going to lie, but it it is like a lesser degree. And I think the story is better for it. That's good. I hope he just kept getting better and better. Like he's not still a jerk, is he? I don't think so. I think everybody who works with him like knows what they are getting into as far as like tone of story 
and like are very excited to work with him. That's good. That's good. Because it would suck if it was like, no, he's the worst. <laughs> he's also very particular with his vision, which I think has been consistent since the very beginning. And it's why like the projects he takes on now um, are much more selective. Mm. Um, unfortunately, his career, like th- no matter what he's worked on, it seems like there's always been like a number of executive or studio interference. Like you yeah. can see that in his Spider-Man trilogy. You yeah. can see it definitely in Doctor the Evil Strange. Dead franchise, Doctor Strange a little bit. I was so sad there wasn't like a lot of puppets in Doctor Strange. Like, I a lot thought of it, was it would CG. be scarier too. Yeah, I thought it would too. I was like, I thought we were man. fully going to get like evil Wanda and then he's yeah. just like yeah she's bad the most horrific part is when he turns uh John Krasinski into Twizzlers <laughs> yeah that part is brutal <laughs> that part is so brutal it's good though but like zom- zombie Doctor Strange sorry for the spoilies I guess if you're not caught up on the, the MCU uh, <laughs> zombie Doctor Strange isn't like that great no no I hated that part <laughs> I did not like it he could have done stop motion mm-hmm. before we dive into like all the special effects. When I was looking up stop motion stuff, I found you can buy you can buy the dancing Linda puppet like mm-hmm. the, it's thirty five thousand dollars. Yeah. Right before this, I watched uh, a <laughs> video with Adam Savage from Mythbusters. Yeah. Where he was like looking at different props that uh, Doug Beswick, who designed it, had made and was like getting rid of. I want the dancing Linda puppet. What would I do with it? Who knows? It would uh, go somewhere. <laughs> it's the only one in existence. Like that puppet is the one that he made and used for the movie. Huh. And so it's it's 12 inches tall. Um, and it worked with like a series of, I think they were called like ballpoint joints. Or it's like a ball and a rod on like either side that you would like tighten and loosen with like a little bitty Allen wrench. To get it to stay. That's so cool. And in the video I was watching, he was saying that like with that kind too, the skeletons, which they use like a a wire for, right? Mm -hmm. Were covered in this like very thin layer of latex foam um, that had to have like little slots in it so that they could get in there with the wrenches and make sure that everything was working. That's so cool. I love stop motion. It is so cool. He also said that like a lot of the time, I didn't know this before I had watched this video, Adam Adam Savage is a very smart this man, video. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to you because he was That's also cool. looking at, um, Doug Beswick also did puppets for Gremlins 2. Oh. And so he was showing the spider puppet and the bat puppet from Gremlins 2. And they're, they're really cool and they've held up like really well. That's so cool. The Linda puppet is like in a little bit of disrepair. Like it's kind of falling apart just yeah. a little bit, but it's still very neat. But yeah, he was saying that like puppets like the Linda one also had like holes in the bottom of their feet. So you could screw them in place like while you were working on stuff. And so each time you posed it, you would have to like screw and unscrew the, the foot so that it didn't move. Oh, that's such a pain. <laughs> so much work so goes into it. So yeah, I have a bunch of, of notes about the production. I hope you're interested in them. No, I'm out of here. <laughs> yes. Oh no. I'm very interested. Yes, yes. And then if we have some time, I think we can we can talk about like the actual plot of it. I just want to talk about that ending because when I tell you, I was so <laughs> shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> like, so confused. Yeah, I was very shocked. So the idea for Evil Dead 2 pretty much came into being while they were on set for the very first movie. And Sam Raimi wanted Evil Dead 2 to be Army of Darkness. So that medieval stuff that was happening, <laughs> yeah. he wanted that to be the second movie. That didn't happen until the third movie. And I'll oh. kind of get like into why. So like I said, they had started thinking about it way back and flipped through my pages. When was the first movie? <laughs> 1981. <laughs> oh, that's so old. I like the frantic flipping. <laughs> <laughs> so they had started thinking about it in 1981. Uh, in between that, Sam Raimi had done another movie called A Crime Wave in 1985 that was co-written with the Coen brothers, who I think I mentioned like at the time he was living with. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all had a giant house, and it was like him, the Coen brothers, Holly Hunter, and I think Bruce Campbell. What an interesting household. Yeah, I feel like it would have been so pretentious, probably. So yeah, Crime Wave came out in 1985, and it was a commercial and critical flop. It did not do very well at all, uh, and it was another, like, dark comedy their publicist scott spiegel who they had known since like high school right i think i mentioned him in the first yes. episode too um he he basically begged them he was like y'all have to do evil dead too or else we're not gonna have any money and y'all aren't gonna have a, a career in entertainment anymore and they were like you're right we should <laughs> probably get on that you're right <laughs> sure. During that time, a man named uh, Dino De Laurentiis, who was a producer and he owned a distributing and production company called the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group. Uh, so he had approached Sam Raimi before this and asked him if he wanted to direct an, an adaptation of Stephen King's story Thinner uh, at the time. Oh. He was working with Stephen King to get like a number of his stories turned into movies. And it, during that time, especially, they were working on Stephen King's uh, directorial debut, Overdrive, which I, uh, Maximum Overdrive, with, oh. which I think I have mentioned that like we need to watch. I forgot it is, that. Ex- I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> it's so silly. It's the one with the Green Goblin killer truck. Oh, we have talked about this before. Yes. It's a maximum overdrive moment. Mm. Oh so they were working on that movie, right? And <laughs> Stephen King really liked the first Evil Dead. So he was like, yeah, Sam Raimi, like, you got to get this kid a movie. So De Laurentiis went to him and was like, hey, do you want to work on this? And Sam said, no, no, thank you. <laughs> but they kept in contact over the years. And so when they were trying to develop Evil Dead 2, Stephen King happened to be at lunch with like crew members from Maximum Overdrive and one of them was like friends with Raimi and Bruce Campbell and he was like yeah they're having trouble like getting funding for their movie and because Stephen King loved the first one so much he was like hey hey you want to you should be their buddy like you should give them money so that they, they can make this really gay uh, the, not gay <laughs> <laughs> So that they can make this really great horror piece. Sadly, it could be way more gay. <laughs> it's, it's just not. De Laurentiis was still like a little hesitant. So he actually went to like uh, the first movie's uh, distributors and was like, is this going to like if we make this, will it be successful? And they essentially told him like, surprisingly, Evil Dead 1 made bank in italy of all places you know that makes sense italian horror is weird yeah well, i gosh i have not even like gotten into like argento stuff but i know it's big it's big so after that he was like yeah okay fine we'll give you we'll make your movie i think sam raimi asked for like four million dollars to make his medieval dead movie and he was like how about we do $3.5 million and you tell a story that's like kind of similar to the first one. And so they were like, okay, I guess we can do that. Uh, and that's how production began on Evil Dead 2. It's funny because it's just like not a sequel, but kind of a sequel, but like it's not. It kind of disregards the first one entirely. And there's reasons for that, too. Oh, before we get <laughs> into that, <laughs> <laughs> before we get into that, here's a here's another fun fact. A pay fact. So the production company that gave them the money to make Evil Dead 2, they were not allowed to release an unrated movie. And when they showed them the final product, they were like, yeah, if we trim this down, it's going to be like maybe an hour of footage <laughs> to get that that R rating. And so what he did instead is he started a shell company <laughs> underneath his production studio, gave it to his son-in-law and was like, okay, y'all are going to quote unquote distribute this movie using all of our resources just under your name. <laughs> and that is the only movie that, that this company, Rosebud, who you can see the the name of at the beginning of the movie right and the like yeah. opening credits that is the only movie that they have ever released that's so funny is that legal 
I don't know. It seems a little sketch. <laughs> it seems not legal. It seems a little sketch. They didn't even have a uh, Rosebud didn't have a uh, distribution, obviously, because they were just the, the name. Right. <laughs> but the entertainment group had already like sold the movie to 350 screens or something like across the country. So it's just a way of getting it out there, I guess, while still like playing with the rules that they'd been yeah, given. Yeah, like we'll just. It's not technically against the rules. Right. I just I thought it was so funny. They had a lot of trouble with uh, with the MPAA, uh, like the first movie, and they used a lot of like tactics to try and get that R rating. Like that's why some of the blood throughout the movie is a weird color, like green or yellow. The Danganronpa approach. <laughs> but it did not work. They still got they still got the X rating, and so they had to use this fake company to release their movie. So funny! It's funny to think that that was rated X. Mm-hmm. The the logo and like little clip that plays behind Rosebud at the beginning was made by Sam Raimi. So <laughs> so I guess they have two. <laughs> they have two things that they have made under that umbrella. That's so funny. I love that. I love these fun facts. Yeah, it's so good. So you mentioned that they had like, they essentially retold the story of the first Mm -hmm. one, right? Yeah. So that wasn't always the case. Uh, Initially, when they had to change the direction of the story, it was going to be that Ash was still in the cabin, uh, but he was like being held hostage or like kidnapped by a group of prisoners. (laughs) (laughs) And it was going to be like a lot darker. Uh, Bobby Joe's character, who in the movie is like this like hot yeehaw lady, right? Yeah. Her character was initially a man and and his death at the hands of the trees was supposed to be like 10 times more brutal. He was supposed to get like ripped in half. Oh, they didn't even really show hers like it like was implied. Right. Like it cut it cut away. Smushed. So that was the initial story that they were going to do. And they were just going to have like footage from the first movie with Bruce Campbell like narrating over it. Like, this is what happened to me. But they couldn't get the rights to the footage from the first movie. Oh. So they just had to start over? They had to start over. Oh. And so with that came some like rewrites. Uh, the credits of this movie say that it is a direct sequel to the first movie. A lot of people consider this like a a reboot or a requel. It's it, like kind of messy territory. Yeah, because it's like, I don't know, it doesn't go in as in depth about like the Deadites and stuff. It just is like assuming you know. So that's what makes it feel like a sequel, but it's not. Right. Like all of his friends from the first movie are missing. Uh, Linda is there, but she's played by a different actress because the one from the first movie, I think, was pregnant at the time and couldn't come back. Classic. (laughs) This same uh, circumstance where they couldn't get the rights to the original footage uh, would happen to them again when it came time to make Army of Darkness. So there is a third version of (laughs) of this sequence of events where Ash is like, we, we see him chop off his hand again in the in the the third movie and stuff. It later gets referenced in the TV show where he mentions dating like multiple Lindas. Yeah, it's so funny. It's very silly. I, I can imagine that being like very frustrating. Like I made the movie, what do you mean I can't use it? Another fun fact, uh, Bruce Campbell fucking hates the little magnifying glass That's necklace. That's so funny. That's so funny. You were saying that he just like didn't see why it's important it shouldn't matter that like sam <laughs> yeah. Raimi just got it or whatever mm-hmm. it saves him multiple times in this movie and he's like it's just a little trinket like it doesn't make any <laughs> like it's ugly it's not even cute sam it's so funny i just like to imagine him being like just so mad about something so silly mm-hmm. so yeah they finally had their movie and everything was set I think the last one was filmed in Michigan. I think that's what we said. This one was filmed in North Carolina. And the the filming process for this one was a lot smoother. That's good. With like a few hiccups that carried over. So like in the last one, we mentioned that like, you know, they were burning furniture towards the end just to stay warm. And 
all this stuff. Sam Raimi was a terror to everybody because he thought it was funny. So like some of the issues that carried over are like those contacts, those milky white contacts that they use for the deadites. You can't see out of them. It's like awful. Like they just kind of like they like suffocate the eyeball. And so any scene with a deadite where they have those in, they had to like rehearse extensively because once they had them in they were blind so like they literally had to go off of like muscle memory for it and bruce campbell like uses them a couple of times throughout the movie and he's moving around a lot in them Mm -hmm. i'm surprised he didn't like injure himself no for sure like he he is fully committed to the (laughs) slapstick of it all like he's doing flips and throwing himself into stuff and smashing things on himself. I was saying he would like he would be a good ghost face because he's so good at like getting beat up <laughs> by furniture because he's just like he's running into everything. <laughs> I love that. I'm so and so's grandpa and I'm here to kick your ass. <laughs> 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 he would be really good at it, honestly. I could see that. God, it would be the most like snarky ghost face ever. He's already a little sassy sometimes, but... Ghostface is the best whenever he's a sassy little twink. <laughs> Fun <laughs> tangent. I have the, uh, the the Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie video game adaptation for GameCube. Nice. Right? Yes. And Bruce Campbell makes cameos in, in the Spider-Man movies. And so uh, they also brought him on for the video game. And he's like <laughs> the narrator slash the tutorial guy. And so as you're going through the tutorial, he'll just like make little quips at you. Like, is, this is so simple. Why you? Why haven't you figured it out yet? That's amazing. You can get bullied by Bruce Campbell in the original Spider-Man get game. Bullied by Bruce Campbell as Spider-Man. <laughs> I gotta play that, man. That's Tobey Maguire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His voice acting in the game is not good at all. <laughs> no, no, not a voice actor. <laughs> it's very funny. But anyways, like I said, the movie was filmed in North Carolina with most of the interior shots of the cabin actually being filmed on a set that was located at J.R. Faison Junior High. Oh. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. At a junior high? Uh-huh. Was it like an active school or like a know. band? Like, were they like, you can't go to class today. They're filming this <laughs> horror movie. Like, I, I think that would be very cool. That'd be so cool. The exteriors were shot in another location. Sam Raimi and the rest of the production team were like kind of nervous about being so close to uh, their production studio's like headquarters. So they politely requested a location that was about three hours away. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because you don't want them like walking on set and then being like, oh, you got to change this, this and this immediately. Yeah. Oh, just micromanaged. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's another uh, fun, not so fun for Bruce Campbell. But in one of the scenes where they like cover him in blood, (laughs) they used caro syrup. What? What is that? It's a common like blood substitute for movies. But they use so much of it. And it's very thick. And it's very sweet smelling. So in one of the scenes where they like douse him in it for several seconds, it ended up going up Bruce Campbell's nose. And oh, he no. said that like for months afterwards, whenever he would blow his his nose, like there would be leftover syrup. No. Uh, and because it was so sweet smelling, it attracted flies. <gasps> and so he was just like constantly covered in bugs. And there are a lot of bugs like in the cabin too, which I'm yeah. guessing weren't part of the set design they just, <laughs> they just appeared mm-hmm. that's gross there's like scenes too where like the blood is just like spewing out for a long time on them like a very long time everywhere oh the bugs the bugs and this is where i got confused with the last one so henrietta in this movie is uh one of the characters the devil moms right so that is played by Ted Raimi, Sam's younger brother. And the suit in that was like a heavy latex thing that just did not breathe at all. Mm. And so he was sweating the entire time. And you can see in some shots, like sweat just like pouring out of the the monster's like ear or mouth because he just got so hot in there. That's so gross. It's real gross. I, I don't like sweating. 
<laughs> and I feel like they had really hot working conditions. It makes me feel icky just thinking about it. Yeah, I, I would not have been a fan of that, like, at all. And it's like a lot of horror movies, especially back then, it's like, like, oh, yeah, it was hot. I was melting. It was a disaster. And it's like, oh, God, because like Texas Chainsaw is like that. Too. Right. We talked about like the, the like rotting meat mm. in, the, in the kitchen. Like, oh, I can't. Mm, I, no, I, I can't imagine. I saw an interview with the director of the new Evil Dead. And he said that he expects people to puke in the theater. So I'm, I'm like, um, what does that mean? I can't imagine. It's like, like I don't know. How gross is it going to be? I paid ten dollars for this popcorn. I'm not. I don't want to. I'm not going to. I don't puke very easily. I, I have like no gag reflex, and I just like don't really. Puke. Uh, but I don't want to feel queasy. Like I don't know. Uh, I get sympathy pains. That's what I'm worried about. Like, you you don't like eyeball stuff. I don't like eyeball stuff, and I'm very worried about that. Because, like, ugh. there is eyeball stuff in this movie. There was. Where an eyeball goes flying into the <laughs> mouth of, of a man. That was actually shot in reverse. Oh. Because it, it would have been very hard to directly aim that eyeball into his mouth, probably. Yeah. That that's true. That would be really, all the takes they'd have to do. Okay, like we gotta throw this eyeball in your mouth again. Hold so, on. So they probably just like had it in his mouth attached to a string, and then they said go, and they pulled the string. That makes sense. I, that one's not as bad as like um, like stuff being poked into eyes, mm-hmm. like when people like gouge eyes, like barbarian or something, or like yeah, um, needles in eyes. I can't do that, and I think it's because I get such bad sympathy pains, like my. Like, whenever a bone breaks out or something like that, like, my arm will hurt. I don't know Mm -hmm. why I do that, but with eyes, I'm like, (laughs) ugh. It just, it's like, it hurts. Like that football game, like, a year or two ago where that guy, like, broke his (gasps) leg, like, super violently and everybody on Twitter was sharing it. It's like, stop it! (laughs) Yeah, it hurts. Like, just thinking about it, my leg hurts. Like, Uh Like, I don't know why I do that. Is that an autism thing? I don't know. I don't know either. Probably everything ends up being. <laughs> I don't know, because like I've heard, but that is like a much more physical thing. Because I've I've heard that like people with autism like have trouble with empathy in general. Yeah, yeah, it's more like a physical thing. Right. But I'm like ex- I'm like overly empathetic. It's like I went the opposite way, <laughs> where like I just like cry so easily. I but I would never be like I'm an empath. I'm just like I just cry. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know the I answer I don't know. To it. Anyway, back to the, the, the eyeball going into his <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Sticking with the special effects of this movie, we already touched on the dancing Linda puppet. She does ballet. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, the special effects for this movie were led by Mark Shostrom, who was working on the third Nightmare on Elm Street movie, mm. which is another thing that I got wrong from the previous episode this is the movie that has all the the freddy shout outs like his glove is on the wall and stuff because the evil dead movie had played in the background of i think the second freddy movie i still need to watch those i've only seen it which ones did we watch we watched the first two yeah i need to watch the other ones still so the first movie had a poster i think a torn poster for the hills have eyes and so to repay that They did. They put Evil Dead on the TV in the background of Nightmare 2. And then in this one, they just have a ton of stuff. Like they have the gloves. They have Freddy's glove in the shed. There's like a reference to Nancy somewhere in there. There's like all their stuff all over the place. And the implication is that Mark, because he was working on that movie, just kind of borrowed the glove for a day. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I need to borrow this real quick offset. I probably didn't tell anybody maybe smart on his i don't know i guess it's not that smart everybody found out about it they they knew <laughs> yeah under under his direction were a couple of notable names in special effects so uh greg nicotero who people will probably recognize from the walking dead was Ooh. a special effects person in this movie that's cool i still i haven't watched the walking dead it's diminishing returns i'm not a big zombie girly i've never been like a big zombie person 
I feel like it was good for a while, and then it was boring for a while, and then mm. it was like, okay, I get it. And yeah. now they're still they're still making them. Really? They're planning the movies now and all the spinoffs. Oh. At that point, I'd just be like, take me, zombies. I'm done. It's <laughs> too long. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then working a lot. I, I did see it. Here's another tangent. Oh, God. Now I got to look up brands. I think it was Ikea. I don't know. <laughs> what? Um, so the, the Walking Ikea? Dead had a, a Kia, like a oh. car. <laughs> um, so the Walking Dead had a, uh, <laughs> a paid sponsorship by, no, I think it was Hyundai. That's what it was. Hyundai? Is that Hyundai? How do you say that? Hyundai? I've always just said Hyundai, but that's probably I don't not know. right. But they had a they had a, a sponsorship with that company, right? And so there was like a like a a car that they drove around for three seasons of that brand. And one of the stipulations was that as long as anybody is driving this car, nothing bad can happen to them while they are inside of it. They can step out of the car and die, but nobody will be dying inside this car <laughs> because of the brand. Yeah, because of their because of their sponsorship That's of the so show. So funny. Like. Apple actually does something kind of similar. If you see like an iPhone in a movie, most of the time it will not be used by like the villain. Huh. So like in, in Knives Out, Chris Evans' character does not have an iPhone, but I think most everybody else does. <laughs> what? What? They just give Chris Evans a Samsung. Yeah, that's, like, that's literally. mean to Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> Samsung, the brand of villains. Maybe they should give their phones away for free. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's silly. It's silly how brands can like impact movies and TV shows like that. But it is. It's a thing that happens. We're not talking about Knives Out, even though it's a very good series too. I love Knives Out. I love <laughs> Knives Out, but I love Clue. So, of course, I love Knives Out. I feel like you have to love Knives Out if you like Clue. Yeah. Well, we're going to cover Clue in our next episode, Tim Curry. <laughs> the Tim Curry episode, where Mint doesn't stop talking forever. We, sh- <laughs> we should have a Tim Curry month. I would love to have a Tim Curry month. Maybe we'll do that for our, for our collective birthdays, <gasps> since yeah. you, I, and the show are all September. Yeah, September. We can call it Tim Time. <laughs> Tim time. <laughs> September. Oh. oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> TM, TM, TM. We're trademarking it. Yeah, it's ours now. <laughs> Fuck off, Tim Allen. You're not invited. <laughs> You're not invited to September. You fucking narc. Ugh. Weirdo. He looks like my uncle. You know the reason... <laughs> Do you know Tim, fuck, not Tim Curry. <laughs> Tim Allen got busted at an airport with a, a ton of cocaine once. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought he was just like some conservative dude. I, he is, but like this, the, him getting caught at the airport was kind of like the catalyst for it. Uh, because I think to avoid prison time, he essentially gave up like a bunch of names of people who were also doing cocaine. Ew. And then he made his whole, the rest of his career off of being a weirdo conservative comedian. Ah, I hate that. Why does he get to be Santa? (laughs) Oh no, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve to be Santa. Or Buzz Lightyear. Oh yeah, he's Buzz Lightyear. (laughs) Okay, Buzz Lightyear has big cop vibes. I'm sorry. He does. (laughs) I'm sorry. All my Buzz Lightyear stands out there, I apologize. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, the special effects of <laughs> Evil Dead 2. <laughs> oh, no. So Greg Nicotero and, and Robert Kurtzman did a majority of the work on the show under, under uh, fuck, on, on the movie <laughs> under Mark Sh- Shostrom. <laughs> <laughs> breathe, breathe, Faye. <laughs> Robert Kurtzman has done a whole lot of stuff um recently he's worked on he's worked on a bunch of netflix properties including the fear street trilogy which is very good oh, and i, I would be down to talk that. about sometime did y'all ever finish that one no oh, i need to God. finish that i forgot about it he also worked on the haunting of hill house a personal favorite of mine and he worked on little nicky 
starring Adam Sandler. So Oh, what? There's that. I've never too. seen that. Can I be honest with you? Can I be real yeah. with you? I don't think I've ever seen a single Adam Sandler movie. Ever? Ever. People will be like, oh, this movie? And I'm like, huh? And it's always Adam Sandler. That's wild. I know. That I must can't... be the most wild thing you've ever told me. I'm sorry. That's what everyone always says. They're like, huh? And then everyone's like, <laughs> we got to show you. But then nobody ever does. So I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Mr. Deeds? No. The Water Boy? No. The Billy Madison? No. Eight Crazy Nights? No. The Longest Yard? No. <laughs> Fifty first dates. Maybe I might have seen that one before, but I don't remember it. Grown ups one or two, no, definitely or not. Potentially three. No. I don't know if they made a third definitely one. Definitely have not seen those. Uncut gems. No, that's new, isn't it? Yeah. That one's like way different than the other ones you've described or that you've. I named. now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well. I think I ran out of Adam Sandler. The Big Daddy, did I say that one? Why is it called that? No, I haven't seen it. It's got Dylan and Cole Sprouse in it. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I guess I've just never seen an Adam How Sandler many movie. Adam Sandler movies can I name? <laughs> what a weird segment for this episode. <laughs> Happy Gilmore? No, that's the one that people get the most upset with me that I haven't seen. That's, that's fine. like everyone that mentions that movie, and then I'm like, I've never seen that before. They're like, What? You haven't ever seen it? I'm like, I'm sorry. Just haven't. That's my boy. What? That's my boy. No, I've never even heard of that one. It's got Adam Sandler and, and, and Andy Samberg. Oh, I like Andy Samberg. And you won't like that movie. Oh, no. You don't mess <laughs> with the Zohan. I've heard of that one, but never watched it. Why do I know so many Adam Why Sandler movies? Why do you movies? know? <laughs> I, I thought you had a list. You're just naming these off the top of your head? This is just off the top of my dome. <laughs> I Googled it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you hear my clicky clack of my no, keyboard? No, I didn't. Of phones. <laughs> phones exist. I would never use my phone during a recording. I'm a professional. Oh, no. My <laughs> I just got open Twitter. <laughs> oh. Yeah, me neither. I, I don't need constant stimulation with like four different monitors at all what times. Was your, what was what's your favorite Monster Masquerade episode? I like the one where Faye listed off Adam Sandler <laughs> movies for five minutes. <laughs> oh, what's that one about? Oh, Evil Dead 2? <laughs> Um, Spanglish? <laughs> oh, I think I've seen that one. <laughs> Yay! I've seen one. I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, he's like oh, the he's main the guy. guy. <laughs> 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 oh no. Punch Drunk Love? No. I don't know what What's that is. What's that one where he has cancer? What? <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was like an Adam Sandler extended universe. God, this is so the Evil Dead. Too. We're off the rails. We got off the rails. <laughs> How did we even get here? <laughs> it's because it's because Robert Kurtzman's special effects worked on Little Nicky, which is the one where oh. he plays the son of the devil. Yep, yep. I've still never seen that, but and he talks. He talks like this because he got hit in the face with a shovel. Why they? Oh, that's got to be so annoying. Because his brothers don't like him. Yeah, it's not oh. great. <laughs> There's also a talking dog in that movie. Oh, cute! And at one point, the the one of his brothers uh, puts boobs on the devil's like best friend's head. Huh. So Robert Kurtzman worked on both of those movies. I see. Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this one's definitely the better one. I haven't seen the other one, but this is the better one. <laughs> it's good. I put that in my notes just to show that like there was a wide range, and then we went on a whole tangent. But you didn't uh, know where that was going to take us. I didn't. <laughs> but, you, but you couldn't have predicted me saying I've never seen an Adam Sandler movie. I really just thought I'd talk about the special effects and move on. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Monster masquerade <laughs> where we stay on topic. 
<laughs> we got the giggles. I do, I do. While we're talking about special effects and, I guess, stunts, I would fall Ooh, into stunts. that category. Stunts. Uh, so obviously we talked about Bruce Campbell just, like, flinging himself into literally everything. Did he do it himself? He did do it himself. That's great. That scene where he is fighting his own disembodied hand uh, was based off of a short movie that Scott's a short film that Scott Spiegel had made when he was a teenager. That take in the movie was the first take. So like literally that entire time, it was all one take. What? I don't know how many times they made him do it, but it was the first one that they used. <laughs> they did it like 20 times. <laughs> and like, ah, the first one was good. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> the part where he is getting chased by the demon in the forest, and it's like that, like, real fast shot, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was shot <laughs> by Sam Raimi, I believe, on a bicycle. <laughs> There's a common myth that Sam Raimi bonked into Bruce Campbell and broke his jaw while they were filming that part. Uh, but that's a lie. That's a oh. story that Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi made up one day at a convention, <clears throat> and then they made a bet to see how many people they could trick <laughs> into believing that story. That's so funny. That's so funny. They just lied. And so to this day, it's one of those things that like has been falsely reported so many times that people just people just take it as gospel. That's so good. As like a, this is a thing that happened on the on the set of yeah, Evil Dead this Two. Totally happened for sure. And Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell are like, <laughs> 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 no, it didn't. We lied. I wonder how they shot the Bobby Joe being pulled through the forest because that looked pretty painful. Um, it might have been because I saw one. I didn't write this down, but I know one of the scenes where like. He's like suspended against a wall and, and like blood is flying on him and stuff. So they manipulated it. So where he was like actually lying on the ground and they were just like flinging stuff at him. So it might have been like a similar tactic where they were where Bobby Joe was put on like a, a moving background. Oh, and like that she didn't actually sense. have to do stuff. I don't know. I didn't look that part up. You got me. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I stumped. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i really like this movie i think it's great i like the new cast members for the most part except for the one dude bobby joe's husband he's kind of the oh, pits he's annoying and also, <laughs> and also annie's boyfriend who just dies just he's just there and then he dies like very quickly oh i forgot about him the blonde man oh yeah oh yeah He's there. He, he died so fast. Mm -hmm. Like he's there and then he then he's no longer there. That's a, because the, the first part of this movie is like largely retelling the uh, events of the very first. Like a lot of things happen quickly, uh, including the <laughs> the initial possession. Like it's just so funny to me that immediately after playing that tape, like everything goes bad. Yeah, the pacing of this one is very abrupt. Mm -hmm. it's kind of fun and then it's not and then it takes it's like time for a while yeah it's like i was asking you about how the um like the dead eyes work because it that they seemingly just get insta possessed at the beginning but then they're like fine for a long time and i was like i don't really they just decide to possess people but you said it's like zombie rules it like it kind of depends so like in this one, there is the presence in the forest that is like the big bad, essentially. So that's the evil force that can possess people. Yes, the evil force, which you see towards the end of the movie as like a large little demonic head that Ash is fighting, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a fun fact, uh, the crew named that head uh, Rotten Applehead. <laughs> They made it too dang big and heavy to take back with them, to take home with them. Uh, so after they wrapped shooting, they just left it in North Carolina. What? 
it disappeared for a while until it was found in a haunted house, like very close to the original like location. The random in haunted North house. Yeah, they just found the giant head and we're like, we have a haunted house. Why not? Why don't we make this like part of the attraction? Where? I mean, it makes sense. Where is it now? I don't know if, if that haunted house is still there. That was in Wadesboro, North Carolina. Huh. So yeah, it kind of depends. It seems like the evil force is like the 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 Kondarian devil or whatever, and then he has like a bunch of minions. So I guess he can like directly possess people, and then once their souls are corrupted or whatever, they're like zombies. So then they can bite or scratch people and they'll turn. That makes sense. And then I guess it depends on either like their their will or just how like healthy they are, but like how quickly they turn. Cause like Ash turns and fixes himself a couple times throughout this movie, and he's also able to stop it by cutting off his hand. Yeah, that was interesting. So there's not, I don't think there's very strict rules. They kind of like try to firm that up in the TV show, I feel like, but I never finished that, so I don't totally remember how it works. But yeah, a lot of it is just like, we need something scary, ha- <laughs> scary to happen. Add another deadite. Yeah, throw a deadite in there. Yeah. It's good, though. I love this movie. It was very fun. Like I said, the ending shocked me. <laughs> I did not know where it was going. It just makes things weird. It does. So yeah, they, they put that there so that they could essentially like write themselves into the sequel that they initially wanted to tell. And then the movie didn't do... It did decent numbers, but like definitely not what they were hoping for. And so it was a little while before Army of Darkness got made. And if we ever talk about that, we'll get into like the mess the, the, <laughs> that they had with the studio for that one. Interesting. Because it doesn't even have Evil Dead in the title. So, like, if you yeah. didn't know it was an Evil Dead movie, how, how would you well, know you to would, watch You just it? would not know. Right. This movie is iconic and has been referenced, like, to hell and back. I saw one article that said that the video game Doom was largely based off of Evil Dead 2. It's neat. Ash gets his chainsaw hand. Ash showed up, showed up in... Uh, Dead by Daylight. Yes, the classic chainsaw hand. Fun fact about the chainsaw hand. uh, They had dulled the teeth on it to make it a little safer. Uh, But then the smoke for the chainsaw was tobacco smoke. Uh, So they had... (laughs) They were trying to find something that they liked uh, on the camera. And they found what worked best was that they had a tube that they put in Bruce Campbell's uh, leg... And then Sam Raimi would just puff him some cotton. <laughs> and that was the smoke. Huh. Yeah. It doesn't seem very safe. Probably not. <laughs> Speaking of the evil presence. <laughs> so when it's chasing him and like talking and making all those like weird sounds. Uh, so it is Sam Raimi's voice, but it is also samples of Orson Welles. What? Yeah. Owen Wilson. (laughs) That's all I can think of every time. So Evil Dead 2 is is technically the last movie that Orson Welles appeared in. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Where would we be without Bruce Campbell saying groovy in this movie? Oh, yeah. Is that the first time he says it? It is. Oh, it's so good. It's Mm. so iconic. I need to watch the TV show. I don't think it's on Netflix anymore. Well, dang. Where do you watch it then? I don't know. You gotta buy the physical copies, I guess. I guess. That's weird, because it was like a Netflix exclusive, right? I think it was on like Showtime at first, and then Mm. later got added to Netflix. I don't super remember. I wasn't actually a fan of of the series until they had finished it. Like, I didn't get into the movies until, I think, after it was done. Huh. Yeah, I just love it. I love this movie. I think it's great. We didn't talk a whole lot about the plot, but that's well, okay. I mean... Because I think you can watch it. <laughs> yeah, you can watch it, and the plot is, like, very similar to the first one. Mm-hmm. 
So listen to our very first episode. Except in the first one, <laughs> uh, Ash burns the ne- the the Necronomicon, oh, and true. in this one, it's totally fine at the beginning. Yeah, the the important parts, I guess, are different. So in the first one, Ash does also not go; he doesn't get time traveled. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I like it. I like Annie. Annie looks like uh, Billy Piper. Yeah, if you like. I love her shorts. They're real. They're kind of cute together. They're so cute. I ship it. Mm-hmm. I ship them. They're cute. He needs to be a little bit nicer, though, but they're cute. <laughs> he will not be. Oh, no. <laughs> he gets... No. He, he becomes much more macho with no. every installation. That sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. That's I awesome. think I'm good with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We did have a long... <laughs> Adam Sandler tangent. We did. We did. <laughs> it's so funny though. But also we're getting back in the in the swing of, of the recording swing. And stuff. Yes. Now everyone should go see the new Evil Dead. Yeah. Apparently it's gonna be very good. Getting lots of good reviews. Also, thank you if you've hopped on from I think this is the first episode with our new feed, because Oh yeah iTunes and Anchor done goofed everything up, so I've had to like transfer to a new channel. It's so sad. So if you haven't before and you would like to review the show to help us out or tell a friend about us, that'd be real cool of you. Yeah. I met a person in person that listens to our podcast because I had like mentioned it in passing a year ago at my work. Let me tell you, when a person in real life calls me mint, I like mentally shut down so maybe don't do that in the future you're chill uh-huh. if you're still listening you're chill but i was horrified <laughs> i was like no <laughs> no 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 i've been found <laughs> so maybe not that in the future but yeah i should have i should have mentioned like hey and hello to any new friends who have just yes found hello us. new friends yeah i think we're due for an animated movie next, so I'll try to find that. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. I'll be on the hunt. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Monster Masquerade. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to let us know somewhere on the internet and consider sharing the show with a friend. If you have a suggestion or topic you'd like to see us discuss, Hop on over to our Patreon to unlock exclusive bonus content and do just that. And we'd super appreciate it if you could leave us a review on iTunes. It's the fastest way to help the show grow. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find podcasts. Groovy.